Hello and welcome to FM Tahiti, I'm Pelham, and in this series of videos I'm just going to be taking you through some of the island nations and the um, islands within those kind of island nations that I've set up. No actual FM gameplay in any of these videos, I'm just using Google Maps to show you how pretty all of it is, and hopefully then you can also pick some of your favourites that you might like to see me either manage or completely destroy if you just take a real disliking to any of them. So we've centred here on the Tahiti Society's mainland. Uh, so this is Tahiti itself. Um, it's a little bit here, it's also known as Tahiti Iti. Iti being the kind of prefix for little in Tahitian. I'm going to go through first the Windward Islands in Tahiti and then the Leeward Islands. A quick note about this for any of you who are particularly pedantic. Some of the islands I'm going to talk about as being Windward are actually leeward but it's just the way i've split them for the game database in future versions i might try and swap them around but they needed splitting so the regional cup competitions weren't too massive uh, but obviously that goes against what's what's real how it really works so here's the tahiti mainland it's the kind of capital of french polynesia uh, as we know it in the real world um and it's the capital essentially of Tahiti. So there's about six, uh, sorry, about 20,000 people who live in the capital of Tahiti, which is Papite, I should have said, uh, just up here. Let's zoom in. This is where the capital is. But there's even a football stadium there. I think that's the um, CS Tarpeta. That's the actual national um, stadium in the real world. Not in ours. This has been demolished. We've got a different stadium for us. But there's the... Um, capital there, there's the Fa'a International Airport there as well, and a beautiful giant mountain, Mount uh, Orahene. And there's about 20,000 people who live in the city of Papite, and there's about 130,000 across the entirety of basically these two bits here, the two main bits of the Haiti mainland. So we have a team, Papite, Excelsius or ASPPT Excelsius based on a real team that exists around here. They're the only ones we've allowed to survive in our database. They were the kind of legacy team from the capital that was allowed to survive. There is one other team that plays on Tahiti, I believe, and that is AS Chance. So AS Chance are also the youth academy team and they play in something called Middle Meat Bay, which I think is a fictional bay we've created around around here where the two sort of it's right about here I think but we consider it to be Middle Meat Bay. So they play on this island as well. But they're just an under twenty one youth team. They start in the under twenty three silver league. So they're just the only ones with really good academy pumping out potential players for the teams to snap up once they've turned twenty one. So there we go, that's TET itself and Papite and AS Chance that we have uh, covered. You may have noticed just over here we have another island and this is one of the other Windward Islands uh, for us and this is uh, Moria. So Moria um, when translated means Yellow Lizard which is why the team here are known as the uh, Yellow Lizards. Um, quite a high population here as well, so quite a lot of people living uh, on this island. The various bays here can be seen across from so from Tahiti you can see some of these bays on the side here. Um, and Tahiti, Moria, one of the other islands we'll look at in a bit called Tetaroa, amongst other islands are meant to be part of the inspiration for the island in Moana, one of the Disney films if you've seen that. Really good film recommend it. Um, but they're part of the inspiration, that kind of tropical ideal is that sort of in inspiration there. So Maria where we've got the yellow lizards. So now we're going to move around a little bit more. So we're going to look at Tupai or Tupé. Over here, a little airport or landing strip. Lagoon in the middle. And if you look at the map you can see where it is in relation to everything else. So there we have TET itself, it's all the way over here. We've included it as part of the Windward Islands, as part of their administration. Um, 
not a huge amount in the way of population on the island. It's mainly actually just coconut plantations and seabirds that are on this island. But we've, again, just put a stadium smack bang in the middle of it. I'm going to say here. Here would be a good place for the stadium. And beautiful looking island, but mainly just coconuts there. So that's to pay or to pay. We're going to move across to one of my favourites now, and that's Mahisha or Mehetia. And this one here is a fairly young volcano, no longer active as far as I'm aware. Um, lots of sheer cliffs from the kind of volcanic activity, lots of greenery from the volcanic activity. Nobody actually lives here, it's just a giant volcano that various explorers spotted and then moved on from. You don't really need to go landing on volcanoes all the time. And if we move out, you can see here it's up to the east of uh, Tahiti E.T. That's where the Mahisha Raptors play because volcanoes are pretty inspirational when it comes to names. So I just work out how to spell this. So it's Manue. So Manue, also known as the Silly Island, uh, a bit like the British kind of Silly Island. This is where Manue Society uh, play, um, and their badge is kind of like a turtle and some trees. And basically this island's a nature reserve. There's about 40 people who live on it, kind of maintaining it as a nature reserve, I believe. Uh, there's lots of turtles, so green sea turtles, seabirds. In this lagoon in the middle, there's meant to be lots of oysters, like thousands and thousands of oysters. So it's it's mainly um, a large nature reserve. So we've kind of ruined that a little bit by sticking a stadium in somewhere. Where are we going to put the stadium? Yeah, let's put it here. You can see people enter the lagoon. That's where the stadium is. It's official now. Moving on to one of the other Windward Islands. Be very careful with my spelling to find the right places. There we go. Don't want to go to Australia. So this is Meao or Me Yao. I'm really going to struggle with this one. Again, there's not a huge amount that goes on in this island. Pretty low kind of population. Lots of very pretty points for taking pictures. Some evidence of some plantations and things like that. Some people living here, but not a vast amount of infrastructure. A um, couple of lakes broken up uh, within it, and it's got quite a high peak here, and then quite a small peak. So the badge for our team here is based on those two peaks, the high peak and the short peak, separated by the water. And again, not many people living here. It's one of our smaller, smaller islands. So where next? I think for this, we have to now move on to the Leeward Islands. So we're going to look first at... Where it is? Uh, Reyete, or Reyete. Again, I'll probably pronounce this differently at some point. So... This island here is actually the largest island outside of the Tahiti mainland. Mori, I think, comes in at about third. This one's um, second. It's got about 12,000 uh, people on it. Fairly pretty island. It's sometimes known in its original translations as the homeland of the Maori people. How accurate that is, I, I don't know, but that's what it's known as. Very pretty. Very big as well, so you can see there's a lot more in the way of like population centres and people out doing things. Um, the name Reiti um, translates as bright sky, so they are the sky brights. And then if we do a little, little quick move here, over here, the opposite side of their kind of coral reef, and still inside the same kind of lagoon, are Taha or Taha'a. Um, I think this is how it's probably more likely pronounced, but again, that's we're being uh, optimistic about my pronunciations and their accuracy uh, here. So, in this island, it's known as the Vanilla Island, and it's got you know a reasonable amount in the way of um, tropical uh, sort of resorts. So you can come here and you see these traditional kind of 
huts in the sea, so that's all very pretty. But also on the, the island itself, there's lots of vanilla production. So the majority of Polynesian, or French Polynesian uh, vanilla comes from this island. Uh, there's also a lot of pearl harvesting or black pearl harvesting uh, here as well. So vanillas and pearls, fairly luxurious uh, island is Taha. And we might see them becoming rivals with the sky brights. So the vanillas and the sky brights next to each other here. Moving on, we also have I don't know if it'll show us this one. Let's try there. Yeah, Motu one. Motu essentially just means island, I think, or atoll. Also known as Bellinghouse Atoll, based on an um, explorer, I think, from Russia, who came by a submarine called it the Bellinghouse. Nobody lives here, as far as I'm aware. Population zero. It is just a little tropical island. So rather than carrying on putting. Um, big 500 seat stadiums in the middle of nature reserves, which we've done with others. We put it on this deserted island, free up a little bit of space. And if we zoom out, see where everything else is in relation to it, see it's, it's quite distant compared to everyone else. Uh, Motu One, our team um, that play there, play on a sand pitch uh, because it's quite a sandy, um, island, so it's it's not particularly rocky. A lot of this is all just growing and built on sand. It's a low-lying sand island, so there's not much cover in there for anyone. But it's one of my favourite ones to play at because they've got the sand pitch. If we move over now to uh, Huahin or Huahine, um, and this one here, let's see where it is in relation to everywhere else. You can see, it's just off the coast of. Uh, Reatia and uh, Taha. Lovely looking island. Uh, it used to be better connected, so this used to be a lagoon rather than a, a bay, so it was kind of more unencompassing. Um, quite a big island, there's about 6,000 people on there. There's a little bit of tourism on there as well. The eels play here, and they're called the eels because I believe this little bit here where the kind of um, sea has found its way through. It's a kind of sand land bridge with this little bridge, actual bridge over it. And there are lots of eels in this kind of more brackish water that live there. And the eels are kind of meant to be sacred. They're sacred eels to the uh, people who originally lived here. And you can pay to come down here and feed the eels. And these eels could be like over a metre long, some of them. So that's where all the fun happens with the eels. Moving on from the eels, we'll go to somewhere that a lot of you might already know about, Bora Bora. So Bora Bora, see that was a very tiny transition you might have noticed. So you've got Bora Bora, Taha, Sky Brights, um, Huhi, which has been, which I completely blanked for a second, and then Bora Bora. So Bora Bora, let's zoom in, where are we going to zoom in? On one of these, or one of these, one of these. It's just, this is where, when you see like the images of Bora Bora or French uh, Polynesia and it's got all the kind of um, huts out on the sea in the lagoon, a lot of the images about French Polynesia are coming from here. So it's just so picturesque and this is like the honeymoon um, destination. So it's pretty famous. It's industry, it's money is made pretty much purely from tourism from that kind of high-end tourism. Bora Bora translates as firstborn, and its full older name used to be um, translated as like a firstborn gift from the gods, something like that, but it's just Bora Bora now. In the Second World War, some Second World War guns over here, so the US uh, puts a um, base on here is to be one of their bases in the Pacific. Never saw any kind of combat, and then afterwards they moved off, but they basically fortified it during the Second World War. So that's Bora Bora, that's one of the big names. It's about 10,000 as its population, but a lot of that is essentially like staff, seasonal work, and that kind of thing. Now if we move over to Mapti, and again, just a small hop, skip and a jump. So these leeward islands are, are quite close together, most of them, apart from like Motu 1, which we'll ignore. So this is Mapti. 
you've got your kind of coverage here, your little lagoon, little entrance here, little islet. One here as well, you've got a little airport um, and then you've got a barrier reef, it's on a little barrier reef. Various pensions, as I mentioned in some of the other videos, you can go to one of those big tropical resorts in Bora Bora, or you can go to what is known as a pension, so basically like a bed and breakfast. Much cheaper, hang out with the local family essentially in one of their spare rooms, more or less. So Mount T, about a thousand people or so live here, not a huge island in and of itself. It's known for farming what's known as the noni fruit, uh, which is an amazing name. Noni fruit is also sometimes known as the cheese fruit, so it's quite a pungent smelling fruit apparently, and that's their main export. You can see this is probably all nonis from head to tail, nonis everywhere. But that's Mapti, so their badge has the noni on it. Their badge is the relief of a noni. And I think our last one to look at, so I was just looking at my um, list. There we go, I can't really spell it, I always get it wrong, is Tetaroa, or Tetiaroa. So Tetiaroa has a resort on it called the Brando. And I may have mentioned oh, Bob's Bar, Bob's Bar at the Brando. May have mentioned in some other videos that Basically, Marlon Brando leased out the island. He bought like a 99-year lease uh, on the island. So Marlon Brando in the 1960s filmed Mutiny on the Bounty because the HMS Bounty mutinied near here. And I think in one of the videos about it's the Austral Islands and the Bass Islands, I point out one of the islands they landed on and ruined things for people. Um, but they used this as one of the filming locations along with Moria. And he married a French Polynesian woman, um, settled his family here, started to put together a kind of hotel, and now after he's died, his family have turned it into a big kind of eco hotel and resort. So there's a wharf. They tried to get a um, landing strip in there. I don't know if that's so yeah the brando is just here. It's quite a it's all kind of beach based, but it's meant to be a very kind of luxury uh, resort going on here. That just looks nice. Yeah. So it's Fairly lovely place. There's a BBC or Channel 4 documentary where the people go and visit this. Um, so there's actually like a full hour's worth of footage of them just enjoying it's essentially paradise. Um, and that's Tetaroa, so they're known as the Tetaroa Reefers, and this is a team my brother used to play as uh, quite a bit. And I think then I've covered pretty much all the teams. So if I just go back, you see Tetaroa, a bit north of the uh, mainland. And then you've got a lot of the rest of the teams over there. So that's French Polynesia, or the Titian mainland within French Polynesia, covered. Thanks very much for watching this. Like I said, no FM gameplay. This is just so you can pick out who you want to support. I recommend Mount Tea because they're full of nonnies. Uh, or potentially, um, I don't know, Bora Bora is too obvious a one to support. I'd maybe go for um, the hipster's choice of uh, Manue because of the green sea turtles. That's probably the hipster's choice. Go for that one. Uh, thanks very much.